An Asian girl is at the top of my effort list. Annabelle, you mean your hot Asian friend? That Asian roommate of yours, she's so hot. I bet she's crazy in bed. You know, if I sleep with you, I'll only have a black girl left on my list. Hi there, I'm Annabelle, the aforementioned hot Asian chick, and welcome to my life. All of those screenshots that you guys just saw that I read, those are real things that have been said to me or about me to my friends, both online and even to my face. When I first got to college, I did what every typical college student does. I downloaded Tinder, Bumble, the works, you know, that's what we all do when we get to college, right? And when I first started getting messages like these, I was kind of confused, you know, but I mean, I just got to college, I'm kind of new to all of this stuff, and I hadn't really experienced this before, so in a way, it felt like maybe a compliment. But as time passed, I got pretty sick of it, and it started getting gross, it started getting weirder, and I realized that what was happening, what I was dealing with here, these were not compliments. I was being fetishized. People were taking my race and reducing me to the single aspect of me, the single trait. They reduced me to a metaphorical checkbox on their effort lists. Pretty gross, right? And so for those unfamiliar with fetishization, essentially it involves taking a person, and in this case, an Asian woman is myself, someone who's mixed race in particular, and just kind of sexualizing you and objectifying you. And so as I was kind of digging down this rabbit hole, I came across this study from Quartz Media looking at how men respond to women and vice versa on dating apps. And I saw that Asian women were actually getting the highest response rates out of any other race of women. And so with everything that had kind of been happening to me, I'm looking at this study and I'm like, okay, like this is not some like innocent thing. And so this is how I'm feeling. I'm getting pretty tired of it. I go on a little white boy strike, that I love, like, or that's what I refer to it as, where I basically go on Tinder and I'm queer, so I'm checking the settings. I'm like, okay, like all the genders, I need a race one here to say no white boys, but you know, whatever. So I'm swiping left at all the white guys, and I'm still tired of this, right? I'm, so I wrote a blog post, and then I got dragged on our Hoppa. So for anybody unfamiliar with our Hoppa, it's a subreddit on Reddit. <laughs> Uh, and essentially, HAPA, it means that you are half Asian and half white, most commonly. And so this thread was for men of Eurasian, so half white, half uh, Asian, HAPA descent. Uh, and I was kind of looking at this at first, I'm like, oh, like, this is pretty cool, right? Like, my experience as somebody who's also HAPA is on this thread, like, how awesome. But I got dragged. They were not having it with me. And as I'm digging a little more, I realize this subreddit is like incels for HAPA. So if you don't know what incels are, it stands for involuntary celibate. It means basically guys that can't get laid and so they're blaming this on women because of course we're the scourge of the earth. And so this was like a subreddit for incels who are HAPA. And so there are all these comments, right, kind of just dragging me, debating what I had talked about. And the one that really hit home for me, that kind of took me down this road where I started like going down a rabbit hole, uh, is they basically said, well, have you ever considered that you and the other women who are complaining about these white guys, saying all these gross things to you, you're actually fetishizing the white guys? And I'm like, okay, this is so far from what's actually going on. Like, I'm out here on a white boy strike because I'm tired of this stuff, right? And this has never happened to me from people of other races. So like, okay, like, what are you, what are you talking about? What is going on? Like, why are they so upset? I thought they would understand, right? And so going back to that study I mentioned before, if you actually take a look at how women are responding to men on these dating apps, Asian men are getting the lowest response rates. They're not even among the highest ones. And so I'm digging a little further and I realized that underlying a lot of what these guys have been saying about me is this concept of emasculation. So if you're unfamiliar with this concept, it basically means em emasculating somebody and basically means stripping a man of his masculinity and oftentimes kind of taking away his sexual prowess, you know, messing with his uh, sexuality and, and as well feminizing him because in this world we view femininity as very negative. And so basically what this study was showing me is that Tinder and all these apps it's really just showing us how we tend to look at people, our own internal racial biases on these apps. And so if you're still not quite convinced, you're a little confused what I mean about emasculation, 
This is an example I like to show. So how people responded to Lord quite a few years ago when she was sharing photos of herself and her, at the time, boyfriend. And so all these tweets that people were saying, they were calling him ugly, saying Lord could do so much better, all of these terrible things. And when I'm looking at this, I'm seeing this guy's Asian. If he were white, if he were black, if he were any other race, like would this have happened? You know, would they be emasculating him like this? And so I keep going down this rabbit hole and I realize the other thing that's kind of underlying what all these people are saying about me on this Reddit thread is the glorification of whiteness. And so I'm half white and I'm half Asian and I'm realizing, actually, the glorification of whiteness is something that I've seen in my life. Basically, if you don't know what it means, it's a tendency to view whiteness as the norm and even the goal. So I'm thinking about when I'm in Taiwan with my family and everybody's like fawning over my sisters and I saying, oh my God, you guys are so beautiful. Your skin is so white. There's things being sold across the world that make your skin whiter, lighter. And I'm realizing like this is what has been going on as well. And so if you actually look at that study again and how women are responding to men, white guys actually had the highest response rates. And so that brought me to finally kind of understand this thing that kept coming up in this thread, WMAF, which stands for white male, Asian female. And it refers to interracial couples in which the guy is white and the Asian is female. And I'm, I'm still kind of confused, you know, I mean, this is my parents. They're white guys, Asian female, like, but they're amazing. They're wonderful parents, they're so in love. So I'm kind of confused at first. I'm like, why is this like a phenomenon that they have to talk about, right? Well, we have got the receipts. So if you take a look at a different uh, study that was done by OkCupid and you look again at race and gender, Asian women were overall rated the highest by men of all races. But if you take a look at how women rated Asian men, they were overwhelmingly negative. And amidst all of the races of women rating men, Asian men were overwhelmingly, again, low uh, compared to all of those races of men. But then white guys were rated the highest. And then as well, if you take a look at census data, there's actually three times the amount of white male, Asian female couples compared to their counterpart, Asian males, white females. Okay, so like, what is the point? Why am I standing up here preaching to you guys about race and gender and dating? Well, dating's really complicated. And when you bring in issues of race and gender, it just gets even more complicated. And the thing here is, I am only scraping the surface. I'm only talking about couples in which one person's white and one person's Asian. What about couples of two different races that are not white, two different people of color? What about queer love? So many things to consider. The other thing that I really took away from this as I was diving into this and learning all about this is that yellow love matters. So in a world where Asian women are fetishized, Asian men are emasculated and whiteness is glorified. Choosing to be with someone of the same race as you, especially for Asian couples, is pretty radical and it's pretty beautiful. But at the same, at the same time, being in an interracial couple where you're white and then the other person is a person of color, here Asian, is still kind of controversial, but it's for different reasons now. Years ago, we had anti-miscegenation laws, right, that or didn't allow people of different races to get married. But now you're allowed to do that. But there's a different kind of controversy, because at least for me, having learned all of these things, it's a little harder for me, and it was harder for me, to kind of look at these couples in the same light. But at the same time, just because there are all of, the, all of these crazy internal biases that we all have, doesn't mean that interracial couples, like my parents, aren't amazing. So they're actually here in the audience today. And this week is actually their 25th anniversary. They are an amazing couple. They're wonderful parents. And they've shown me what an incredible love looks like. They're so happy together. They're so healthy. And they've really shown me what it looks like to take care of somebody else in a partnership. As well, this is my current partner, Cam. <laughs> He's a white guy. The irony is not lost on me, I promise. I actually met him while I was attempting to go on this white boy strike. I think it was the universe sending me a bit of a sign. Uh, but next month actually mar er, marks our two years together. So, uh, but he's also in the audience today. Hi, Cam. And so Cam has shown me what it feels like to have somebody 
understand what my race is for me. Because for me, right, it's not about being fetishized, obviously, but at the same time, I don't want someone to not see my race. I want them to see it and to understand that it comes with a struggle. But at the same time, it is part of my culture. It's part of my heritage. And I'm so proud of it. And that's all I really have to say. Thank you guys so much.